services on Christmas Eve at 4 and 7. The 4 o'clock will be geared towards children. The main celebration will be at 7. And we will have a Christmas Day service, so everyone's welcome to come. Personally, the later on Christmas Eve I get, the more childlike I become. Well, won't we all, but that's a different problem. Yes. Our worship this morning begins on page 45 of the Book of Alternative Services. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts, and let them return to the Lord, and he will have compassion to our God, for he will richly pardon. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. O come, come, let us worship. Let's do the canticle, The New Jerusalem, on page 78, and we'll read that together. Okay. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though night still covers the earth, and darkness covers the nations, over you will the Lord arise, over you will his glory appear. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will always be open, day and night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin nor destruction within your borders. You will name your walls salvation, you will call your gates praise. No longer will the sun be your light by day. No longer the moon give you light by night. The Lord will be your eternal light. Your God will be your glory. And the collect for this third Sunday in Advent. Let us pray. God of power and mercy, you call us once again to celebrate the coming of your Son. 
Remove those things which hinder love of you, that when he comes he may find us waiting in awe and wonder for him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now this is a reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. According to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I really got a good one. Yes, you did. She, John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children from Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations, but be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the throng of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winning fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhort exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I hate snakes. <laughs> They're just big With worms. A, no. <laughs> no. No. Okay, no. I okay. hate snakes. So, calling the people a brood of vipers is just, and it's a brood. Like, it's not one snake that's just lying there. It's a whole writhing mass. It's the floor. It's a Medusa. Yes. Sort of gross. A I, Medusa. I oh, man. Yeah, so, you know, um... Who warned you to, free, to flee from the wrath to come? Um, I mean, it, it loses me at snakes because I just get paralyzed. Got it. What is it? And it, the shock value here, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, let's face it. John's words mm -hmm. are, are um, less than nice, right? That's your preacher's description. But, well, the brood of vipers, who told you... You're, you know, um, what was a couple other pieces at the front there? Oh, that um, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Right. And those are the people who came out to John to be baptized by him. And that's right. what he's calling them. Can you imagine if people came to church on a Sunday morning to be baptized, and we went to the congregation, you brood of vipers? Right. Not going to watch, because it's a different kind of baptism, but we talked about that last week, so we don't right. need to deal with that. And it, it, al and it almost sounds like he's getting self-righteous too, right? I mean, who is John? He's, yeah, he's a prophet, but there's lots of prophets that have been, but who is John? I mean, he getting, he, but then he flips it around, right? Like there's someone right. coming after me that I'm unworthy. Yes. Takes away a self-righteous tone right yes. there. I baptize you with water, but one is coming who is more powerful than I, I am not worthy to untie the throng of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. But then here we get to his winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So that's a, a real judgment yeah, metaphor. It is. And I don't think there's any way of talking. And we don't like judging thoughts. In fact, I even have my kids coming home and saying, Dad, we are never supposed to judge anyone. But we can, but well, we have to what, make judgments in order to live in our he's, world. He's, but he's calling us to look at ourselves, to judge our own yeah. behavior, yeah. whether we're vipers, in the light of God's goodness. So if we feel uncomfortable with this particular reading, are we really uncomfortable with what's in the Bible? 
Or were we simply listening? With what the Bible's telling us about us. Yeah. Right? I think we're uncomfortable with ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think the, I think that's really what it twigs on in a very direct, <laughs> unapologetic dart at the human heart. Although I remember once in a course being taught every passage of scripture is good news to someone. Yes. So you've got to figure out who it's good news for. And if it's not, if this isn't good news for me, then how do I have to change for it to become good news for me? Because if it's not good news, then it's something about me that's not right, right? So I'm, yeah. if I'm, um, you know, if I have 47 coats and I'm warm and cozy and there's somebody sleeping out on, you know, s sleeping rough without a coat outside, um, right. I mean, do, I mean then, John then, doesn't... I, then I have a right to feel like I'm being selfish. Yeah. You know, I should feel. I mean, John's not saying what? give away both your coats. He's saying if you find yourself with two, let go of one. It won't hurt. Yeah. He's not so, so he's not saying, and this is interesting to me when we read it this time that I hadn't heard before. Don't give away, you don't have to, we don't have to give away everything we have. We're not all called to be like St. Francis, right. who stripped naked and gave away everything. But, but we it, are called to share when we have a surplus. And we do. And the vast majority of, of us have extra. Mm -hmm. I, I've stopped counting how many people I talk to say I need something do you have a space at the church I'm trying to clean out my basement do mm -hmm. you know someone who could use this do you know someone who could oh, use yes. that that happens all the time mm -hmm. uh, yes. you know and then to me too. and all that is really saying is a response is an ongoing a, response to John's call to repentance is to have a generous heart I don't understand what's so offensive to that. Now, if we find ourselves going, I still don't like hearing that, that that's not, that's not the Bible having an issue. That's not God. That's, that's our wrestling with the Holy Spirit, the fire within. And to, we're finding ourselves To purify odds. ourselves then, the baptism with the Holy Spirit and fire, because what does fire do? It purifies. And we should be so. encouraging each other mm -hmm. and having courage to look at those real challenges, not worrying whether I'm wheat or chaff, but by saying, what am I doing? Am I avoiding that thing that I'm being called to look at? Or am I trying to address it in prayer one day at a time? And action. Amen.
What a lovely conversation. Let's continue on with page 53 with our Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the, the Lord, Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The intercessions for Advent will use the form number 12 on page 119. In joyful expectation, let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. O wisdom of the mouth of the Most High, you reign over all things in the, to the ends of the earth. Come and teach us how to live. Lord Jesus, Jesus come, come soon. O Lord and head of the house of Israel, you appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush, and you gave the law on Sinai. Come with outstretched arm and ransom us. Lord Jesus, come soon. O branch of Jesse, standing as a sign among the nations, all kings will keep silence before you and all peoples will summon you to their aid. Come, set us free and delay no more. Lord Jesus, come, come soon. soon. O key of David and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and none can shut, you shut and none can open. Come and free the captives from prison. Lord Jesus, come soon. O morning star, splendor of the light eternal and bright sun of righteousness, come and enlighten all who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. Lord Jesus, Jesus come, come soon. O King of the nations, you alone can fulfill their desires. Cornerstone, you make opposing nations one. Come and save the creature you fashioned from clay. Lord, Lord Jesus, come soon. O Emmanuel, hope of the nations and their Savior, come and save us, Lord our God. Lord Jesus, Jesus come, come soon. soon. Lord, you know we need our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Grant our requests as may be best for us. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as, as we forgive, forgive those, those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, bless. May the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you this day and remain with you always. Amen.